Copyright Disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use. A lot of cotton is grown in the hot and humid climate of the southern United States. And a lot of this country's wealth was built on the cotton trade. But it's easy to forget that part of the reason that cotton was so lucrative in early America was because it was harvested with the labor of enslaved people. And even though the dirty work of the cotton industry took place mainly in the southern states, many white people in the northern United States gained their fortunes through the exploitation of enslaved workers in the south. And the reason that cotton became such a central economic pillar was not just because of what was happening in the U.S., but because of an entire global financial network that, whether they sanctioned the use of slavery themselves or not, incentivized the use of enslaved labor to satisfy the enormous international demand for cotton. It's time we learn about how cotton... All praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem and Kakadash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, who they eagerly call Jesus Christ. Now, when you're talking about King Cotton, it is something that built America. And the Israelites was the ones that was uh, being used to pick this cotton. They called them cotton pickers. They was the ones who did, did the work. See, they did the work to establish the United States of America as a world power because it was a foundation of picking that cotton that created this uh, great city or great country. Now, when you go into um, that whole situation, you can see how um, these Israelites was called the salt of the earth. It's called the the leaders. See, because Jehovah Shah said something um, to his disciples. He told them that they would have to serve before they could lead or be rulers. Before they can be, uh, or he said the leader, your leader would be the servant. So this is pretty much what the nation of Israel had to do um, and that's how the Lord set it up that they would be servants before they would be rulers and so you see the history how the Edomites who were the so called white people who was enslaving the Israelites they put them uh, pretty much to work in these cotton fields sugar cane fields tobacco fields and these are some of the main industries that supported America. You had the tobacco industry. You had the sugar and the sugar cane and the rum and the wine. All of this was the foundation of uh, the economic system that was coming out of America because they was getting free labor. But during this servitude, uh, that the Israel, uh, Edomites was pretty much uh, getting from the Israelites. This Edomite nation was a fierce nation, and they didn't show any pity. You see, you got the babies in the field. You got the older peoples in the field. Those babies stayed in that field until they became older people. And they were picking cotton for decades. And so this is um, the evidence, the hardcore fact that the Israelites was, was in bondage to the Edomites, the so-called white men. And the scriptures bring that out. See, the scriptures were sealed. And now in these last days, it's being opened to the children of Israel 
to let them know that they are uh, descendants of the man Jacob in the Bible. Now, when you go into the scriptures, you can start. Let's start with the foundation of the Edomites putting the Israelites in the captivity. And, and the uh, Israelites serving the Edomites. Let's get Psalms 137 and 7. It says, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem. So this is showing you how the children of Edom, the children of Esau, they was the one having uh, the Israelites in captivity. Look at verse 8. It says, O daughter of Babylon. So the children of Edom is also the daughter of Babylon. You see? So when you go into, um, let's see, going to the daughter of Babylon, let's get uh, Zephaniah. Or is it, no, Zechariah. Two and seven. It says, Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. So they dwell with the daughter of Babylon. They're dwelling in Edom with the children of the Edomites. You go into Micah, a prophetic book that talks about the second coming of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Look at verse 10. It says, Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. See the children of Israel. Like a woman in travail, for now shall you go forth out of the city, and you shall dwell in the field. What field they was going to dwell in? The cotton field. It says, And you shall go even to Babylon. That's the daughter of Babylon. That's talking about the land of the Edomites. There, see, shall you be delivered. That's that Babylon the Great, where he says, come out of her, my people. In Revelation 18, it says, there the Lord shall redeem you from the hand of your enemies. Who is the enemy that has the Israelites in captivity? It's going to be the Edomites. And let's go ahead and certify that. You can get it out of, um, let's see, let me get it out of Lamentation. Then we'll go to Amos. Lamentation 22. Now, it tells you about the Israelites being in captivity. Verse 18, they hunt our steps that we cannot go on the street. So they got a police system, a, a, patty, a patty roller system that they hunting the steps and making sure the Israelites don't run away. See, keeping them in captivity. Uh, verse 19 says, our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. Second Elders 11 and 12, chapters 11, chapters 12 of Second Elders talks about the Israelites. Uh, I mean, talks about the Edomites being the eagles. And describe them as the eagles and the rulers of the world at the end of the world. Now look at verse 21 and say, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. See, this is the people that has the Israelites in captivity. 22, it say, The punishment of your iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry uh, you away into captivity. He will visit your iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover your sins. So it's saying the Most High not going to send the Israelites in captivity anymore. He's going to send the Edomites in the captivity. Why is he going to do that? Because of they was the um, people that put the Israelites in captivity. Look at verse 6, talking about the Arabs. It says, Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of God's land, for four I would not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried the whole captivity. 
to deliver away the whole captivity, uh, to deliver them up to Edom. Verse 9, it says, Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus. Tyrus is the African. It says, um, It says, Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom, and remembered not the brotherly covenant. So, uh, the brotherly covenant, um, was, um, that's a whole nother situation. But the, the point is that the Edomites, the, uh, was the was the slave master of the Israelites. Now Joel gonna wrap it up and let you know what the whole situation is about. Especially the second coming of Yahweh. Look at verse one. It says, For behold in those days and at that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Um now Judah and Jerusalem um, represents the Israelites as a whole, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. <laughs> Salakia. Now the punishment is in verse 2. It says, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land so all these nations have uh, participated and benefited from the slavery of the Israelites and the cotton situation um, it shows how all of these nations benefited financially from the Israelites. Look at um, Zechariah 11 and 5. It says, Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty, and they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own uh, shepherds pity them not. See, these people are getting rich off of the Israelites. Revelation 18. And, uh, Three, it says, for all nations have drunk the wrath, the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxing rich through the abundance of her delicacy. See, she's devouring the children of Israel, and uh, these other nations are experiencing the same rich experience and the same delicacies that these eat the nation of Edom is um enjoying and so that's what Zechariah 11 5 was talking about um now it talks about um let's go back to Let's see here. Joel. Because this is what the Christians deem to be the second coming of Yahweh, who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. It says, verse 3, and they have cast lots for my people. That's selling them on the auction blocks. And have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. So that the part when they say that they might drink, because this is not talking about just selling them the girl for wine. See, that's that's totally different than just selling somebody the wine. They selling them so they can drink the wine. See, they that meaning they were using these people to make wine, use these people to make the rum, and the rum was created in the islands from picking the sugar cane and turn it into molasses and they made the rum out of the uh, junk of the molasses or whatever. So anyhow, then verse 4 talks about the Hamites and the um, Arabs, just like Amos, 
And then when you get down to verse uh, 19, to get to the point, it names the Edomites. It says, Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. See, it ain't just about the, the picking cotton and the servitude that the Israelites had to serve. They was killing them and hanging them. See, even King David couldn't build the um, ark, I mean, build a temple because he was doing a lot of killing. And the killing was sanctioned by Yahweh, but he just had too much blood on his hand. You see, so just because they were sent to enslave the Israelites and even punish them by the sword, they still got to pay. Now, when you're going to um, Isaiah 14, to add these other nations in now, 14 and 18, because it talks about uh, King of Babylon and the slave master going into slavery. But this adds all the nations in that also. It says all the, verse 18, all the kings of the nation, even all of them lie in glory, every one in his own house. So all these other nations are lying in glory in their own land with their militaries and they're benefiting from the slavery of the children of Israel due to the, the Edomites benefiting from the slavery and the Edomites is supplying them and teaming up with them through the United Nations and NATO and all of these uh, charities that the so-called Edomites put out there to try to make themselves look good. They, um, all these other nations benefit. See, it's like Iran or uh, the American I think Obama, one of them, dropped off a billion dollars worth of um, money. One of them Arab country dropped off all kind of money in the people country. But anyway, uh, that cotton was a major commodity. Now, when you're going to the curses, it talks about it also through the running of 16 and 17. It says, Curse shall thy be in the city, and curse shall thy be in the field. And we was cursed in them fields, in cotton field, tobacco field, sugar cane field. See, we was cursed in them fields, and we was working for the Edomites, our enemy. Look at verse 48. It says... Therefore shall you serve your enemies, which the Lord shall send against you, in hunger, in thirst, and nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck, until he have destroyed thee. Now, this is also going into the sea hill, and this yoke that this uh, people is trying to, the Edomites is trying to put on the Israelites. This is also going to, uh, destroyed the Edomites. See, because he said these curses going to get reversed. That yoke that he trying to upgrade on and, and put inside of the body of an Israelite so he can monitor them and uh, try to cause prophecy to be um, destroyed. This is what's going to reverse the curses, that yoke. And we and you put yoke of iron in the Google, you're gonna see all kind of Israelites pop up. You're gonna see the descendants of slaves, Mexicans and Native Americans being uh chained up by the so-called white man to keep it simple. Now verse seven of Deuteronomy thirty, it says, And the Lord your God will put all these curses upon your enemies and on them that hate you, which persecute you. So all these nations that's benefiting from the Israelites, did all of these curses being put in chains, being put into slavery and submission, it's going to be put on these other nations. 
And so the king cotton produced the kingdom of the Edomites, plus it uh helped the uh, not I won't say helped the Israelites, but was the way that the Israelites was gonna earn their kingdom by serve being a servant first, and then they're gonna be kings afterward. Like in Revelation five and ten and Revelation one and six, say that they would be kings and priests and reign on the earth. See, all nations is not gonna reign on the earth. Only the Israelites is gonna reign on the earth over these other nations, the heathen. And um, like Daniel seven and eighteen, they're gonna reign forever. They're gonna take the kingdom and reign forever. They're not gonna. Or uh, Daniel 2.44, they're not going to give the kingdom to another people. It's going to be in the hands of the Israelites uh, forever. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh, Shah, Ba'ashim, Rekakadash. Double honors to the elders, pushing the truth. Peace of the elect worldwide, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Descendants of slaves scattered around the globe on slave ships and through many captivities. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.